shall make no law of the establishment of religion. When the Protestant movement broke away from the Roman Catholic Church, Protestants still honoured the Roman Catholic institution of Sunday. The Protestant reformers never completely severed the umbilical cord from the papacy. In this quote, the Roman Catholic Church makes sport of Protestants for contradicting their beliefs. Protestants accept Sunday rather than Saturday as a day for public worship. After the Catholic Church made the change, but the Protestant mind does not seem to realise that, in observing Sunday, they are accepting the authority of the spokesman of the Church, the Pope. Our Sunday Visitor, February the 5th, 1950. By the annihilation of the First Amendment, the Vatican can sweep many other religions and beliefs into a web of deception and control, making Muslims, Buddhists, Protestants and any other religion bow down in honour to the Vatican, therefore Satan himself. Acknowledging her day of Sunday or Sun Worship Day, that was not kept by any of the disciples or any of the early churches comprising Gentile or Jew. When the early church became corrupted by departing from the simplicity of the gospel and accepting heathen rites and customs, she lost the spirit and power of God. And in order to control the consciences of the people, she sought the support of the secular power. The result was the papacy, a church that controlled the power of the state and employed it to further her own ends, especially for the punishment of heresy. In order for the United States to form an image of the beast, the religious power must so control the civil government that the authority of the state will also be employed by the church to accomplish her own ends. The United States government has three branches, executive, legislative and judicial. The most powerful branch is judicial because they have the power to interpret the law. Even if a law or amendment is unconstitutional, they still reserve the right to make the final decision. Leave the majority of the Supreme Court judges a Roman Catholic, with the other two judges being Jewish. Laws can be written in a sort of ambiguous way, crafted by Jesuit-trained lawmakers, so that Supreme Court judges can interpret them any way that suits the papal agenda. There are hidden laying dormant in many of the states of America insidious blueprints for the enforcement of Sunday law and a gross breach of the First Amendment. Blue laws are used, which refers to laws enacted by the Puritan colonies in the 17th century to prevent recreational or commercial activities on Sunday. And during the 19th century in America, some southern and midwestern states passed laws to protect Sunday as a day of worship both on a state and local level. Penalties for non-religious activities on Sunday targeted Seventh-day Adventists, Jews and other non-religious people for not attending church, playing cards, baseball and menial chores. In 1889, A.T. Jones, a Seventh-day Adventist, spoke before a United States Congressional Subcommittee, the topic of the discussion being the Breckenridge Bill, which proposed the compulsion of Sunday observance in Washington, D.C. Jones's testimony helped to defeat this bill, and he became known for his abilities in defense of the bill and knowledge regarding freedom of religion. We can see the Jesuits working covertly through the European Sunday Alliance organization to enforce Sunday as a day of rest in the guise of a secular family day. Before 9-11, it was hard to imagine that a government could enforce such laws as warrantless wiretaps on citizens, detention without charge or trial, or assassination of citizens deemed a threat to national security. Is it that hard to imagine a government's now enforcing religious observance by fine, imprisonment and eventually the death penalty? While you're thinking about that question, there are drones circling the skies ready to obliterate anyone the CIA, NSA or Department of Defense give authorization to kill. There are facilities in the United States that qualify as a quasi-neo-fascist system of dealing with civil unrest by potentially enforcement of tyrannical laws. FEMA the Federal Emergency Management Agency sounds eerily similar to the Committee of Public Safety, which beheaded many during the French Revolution. Recent DHS advisers and secretaries like John Brennan and Janet Napolitano are Jesuit trained. Jesuit education was described by Jesuit General Pedro Urupe in these terms. Jesuit education would consist in the creation of multiplying agents, Lisa Monaco, former prosecutor, was an advisor to FBI Director Robert Mueller. 
and advised the DHS on counter-terrorism during the false flag operation of the Boston bombing. Little do people know that Barack Obama was groomed by the Jesuits and worked in a Christian grassroots organization called the Gamil Foundation under the direction of Jesuit priest Gregory Galuzzo, who became his mentor. And does he keep in, in contact with the organization now? You know, uh, once he became a U.S. senator, he he's very much in demand. So it's only on occasion we get to interact with him. Well, an, an occasion is fine, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> once in office, Obama appointed many Jesuit-trained people to key positions of U.S. government. In fact, no other U.S. president in history has appointed as many Jesuit-educated individuals as Obama. Recently, the president recommended apologist for assassination of Americans, Jay Johnson, as new Secretary of Homeland Security, seen here at Jesuit Fordham University. Jay Johnson was appointed General Counsel of the Department of Defense and is considered one of the legal architects of the U.S. military's current counter-terrorism policies. Jay Johnson is an American civil and trial lawyer, so his legal experience allows him to make the U.S. Constitution a very grey area which only lawyers have the talent to do. Jay Johnson has made quotes such as, belligerents who also happen to be U.S. citizens do not enjoy immunity, where non-citizen belligerents are valid military objectives. So as Jay Johnson takes the position of Secretary of Homeland Security, one must ask exactly what does the DHS have planned for the future considering his relevant experience. An alarming fact is that the French Revolution's Committee of Public Safety Protagonists Louis Antoine de Saint-Just and Maximilien Robespierre were Jesuit educated. This period had been labelled the Reign of Terror. That being said, let us now turn our attention to the portion of scripture that tells of beheadings in the last days for not adhering to the man-made Sunday laws. Revelation 24 And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads, or in their hands, and lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. The testimony of military personnel that guillotines are being stored at U.S. military bases raises concerns and interest. Maybe this information could tie in with Revelation 24 on the subject of beheading. Apparently, this way of execution is one of the most painless and can be administered with ruthless efficiency on a mass scale, sending stern warnings to dissenters publicly. The Bible describes the Sunday law as the mark of the beast by the Vatican's own omission in the following statement, they admit Sunday has nothing to do with the Word of God and is their own invention. Sunday is our mark of authority. The Church is above the Bible. And this transference of the Sabbath observance is proof of the fact. Catholic record. The first observance of Sunday keeping by Christians that history records is in the 4th century when Constantine issued an edict not requiring its religious observance, but simply abstinence from work, reading, Let all the judges and people of the town rest, and all various trades be suspended on the venerable day of the sun. Bishop Eusebius of Caesarea claims that Constantine and his army were marching toward Rome when Constantine looked up at the sun and saw a cross, with the Greek words, In this sign you will conquer. At the time of the issue of this edict, Constantine was a supposed newly converted Christian, but also a sun worshipper. In a shrewd political move to unite Rome, Constantine amalgamated pagan sun worship and Christianity, transferring the Sabbath, Saturday, to sun worship day, Sunday. The organisation of this system of worship became what we know today as the Roman Catholic Church. Sun worship can easily be seen here in the monstrance, which carries the consecrated host for adoration. The communion wafer, which represents the body of Christ, is a sun disc shaped wafer. So the Catholic priest, by supposed sorcery, turns the wafer into the body of Christ. The created, creating the creator? The Roman Catholic Church has a long history of quackery, following the superstitious even to this day. At every turn, you'll see within the Vatican or Catholic Church's sunbursts. 
neither Christ nor the disciples or the early churches ever mentioned Sunday as Holy Day. Yet many claim that because Christ rose on Sunday, that this day must be the new Sabbath. But history refutes this argument for the reason that Christian churches kept the Sabbath up until Constantine's edict in 321 AD. And yet some may claim that the Sabbath is exclusively for the Jews, but the Bible puts this claim to rest. Genesis 2, 3 and God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. This is clearly evidence that Adam and Eve kept the Sabbath. Many today are still confused which is the seventh day of the week. The majority of society are unaware that the Sabbath, Saturday, is the seventh day. The Jews came into existence much later in history. Another fact is that the early churches such as in Corinth, Galatia, Thessalonica, Ephesia, Colossae, all kept the biblical Sabbath and were comprised of both Jew and Gentile. The Apostle Paul, in his second letter to the Thessalonians, foretold the great apostasy which would result in the establishment of the papal power. He declared that the day of Christ should not come, except there come a falling away first, and the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. And furthermore, the Apostle warns his brethren that the mystery of iniquity doth already work. 2 Thessalonians 2 verses 3, 4 and 7 Even at that early date he saw creeping into the church errors that would prepare the way for the development of the papacy. The United States of America was a Protestant country as the people who fled Europe were fleeing despotic institutions like the papacy. Historians claim this haughty power killed more than 80 million people for such crimes as owning a Bible or whatever the prelate deemed as heresy. The CIA World Factbook states that only 23.9% of Americans are Catholic. But the US government is mostly either Catholic, Catholic-controlled or Catholic-educated. So the interest of the Vatican will be paramount in the near future when Sunday observance shall be enforced by law and the world shall be enlightened concerning the obligation of the true Sabbath.